Hello, sometimes you have data that's arranged in a tabular format with dates and you want to see that more in a calendar like this, maybe that's color coded. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video with some pro tips, for example, with a filter. So here I can say, for example, I want it to start on the uh, 30th of October and then it will change the starting date like this automatically. And note that this is completely dynamic. So if this changes to 2023, and that will automatically pop up here as need be using formulas. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Ticket the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. This technique you can use either on Excel or Google Sheets. It's the same thing. So let's get started with the data. So here I'm going to go into demo and I'm going to work on the date column. Then I'm going to combine these ones. So what I need to know is what is the weekday of it. Now you might think that the weekday function is good. But no, that only returns us a number, which is not very useful. Although we will use that later on. Now, what we want is equals text, and then this one, and then a comma, and then format the text. We're going to format as DDD, which is going to give us three characters for the day of the week. I can double click that to drag that down, and then we have the weekday of that show. Next up, we're going to extract whatever the Monday is of this week. So um, if we do equals weekday, of this one comma, and then we have these options. So this is what we want, where Monday is a zero and Sunday is a six. So I'm gonna do three, I can double click that or type number three, and this is going to be the weekday related to that. But where it becomes really interesting is if I say equals this cell minus that weekday. So that will be like this. And if I go to my formatting options and I click on this, I'm going to format it as DDD. Then I'm going to see that it's Monday. And note that that's the same DDD that I used in the text function because you used the same code for that. So these are always Mondays. So this is going to be the start of the week. So now we have our axis here and our axis here. And then we're going to need to fill out what is inside. Now, first, what you'll notice is even though this says open mic and Dallas in separate columns, I've brought them in to combine them into one column. We're going to do the same here. So I'm going to say equals this one and this one. This will combine them, but without a space. So I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to say speech marks, colon, space, speech marks, and again. And then it's going to be showing you like that. And I'm going to drag it down. So next, what we're going to do is we want all of these formulas to expand beyond without giving me gibberish results. But indeed, if I drag these down, it will just give me pointless, silly results. So that's not very good. So before each of these, I'm going to say equals if this is equal to speech box, speech box, which is blank, then return to speech box. Otherwise, return that. So I need to do that prefix before all of the columns. And then I can drag it down for future ones. And a close brackets there. And then here as well, then a close brackets there. And then if I take each of these, I can drag them down beyond my table and they are showing me blanks until filled in. Perfect. So once I do something filled in here, so improv and a date, so 7th of September, now it's going to show me something else. Uh, but I also want to get rid of these kind of ugly colons when I don't have anything in the city column. So a little bit more of an adjustment. Um, another if, it's annoying you have to do this many ifs, but if you forget this, you can ask ChatGBT or Bing Chat or a Copilot to give you the code to do that. So if this one equals speech box, speech box, then return just that one. Otherwise return that. And then we have built our formula and I can drag that down again beyond it. And now it works perfectly. All right. So we've kind of got it. Um, now we're going to build our calendar. So there are quite a lot of new functions here. I am expecting you to be using Microsoft 365 or uh, if not Microsoft 365, then at the very least 2021. So to create my axis, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to start with the vertical one. So equals unique. And then I'm just going to do the Mondays. And this is just going to give me the unique list. But I'm going to set that up 
to be a date thing like this. Personally, I don't like these short dates. I like Control Shift 3 shortcut because it gives me three letters for the month, which means that if you're in America, if you're in UK, you're in Australia, whatever you are, you'll still be able to understand it. So this is the way that I like to do it. And that's Control Shift 3. You can't do it with a drop down. So it's way faster with a shortcut. And then uh, we're going to do this. So we could also do equals transpose and unique of these ones. And this will give us the unique values like this, but it doesn't give us sorted. So uh, usually I just will manually write them. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, oh, and I do want to sort these. So whenever you do unique, usually you would put a sort around that. Now it's giving me all of them sorted. By the way, sometimes there are jumps. So here it's going to go from 26th of July to to June to 31st of July. So if, if there isn't anything that week, it is going to jump. I personally don't think that's a bad thing. If you really want to avoid that, you could put in some dud dates in here. But personally, I think that's fine. All right. So now we're going to use a similar technique to what we did here where we're going to join the things together using ampersands. So I'm going to write equals this one and this one will give me something like that. Now, uh, we're going to convert this into a text value like we did before. And we're going to do dd space mmm space yy, which is the one that I like. And so it looks like that. Maybe put a space in between. There we go. Uh, so it's going to show it to me like this. Oh, by the way, I do not want Sunday here. I want Sunday here because I'm starting on the Monday. Of course, if you want to start your week on the Sunday, the same thing would apply. All right. So now we've got it like that. And I will say that these dates will be incorrect because they are always referring to the first day of the week. Now, if I drag that across, it doesn't work um, because I want to drag it across and drag it down and it will just keep extending because it's referring to the cell right above and the cell directly to the left. So that's not very good. I want to use um, something called mixed referencing, which is I want H to stay in the column. So I'm going to put a dollar sign there. And I want I to stay in, uh, to move around the column number, but I want three to stay as number three. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of three. And then if I drag it down, it will show me that. And if I drag it across, it will show me that. Note that it's showing me the same date for all of them. So this is deceptive. The 27th of February was a Monday. It wasn't a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. But that's just saying when the week started. And we just need that for our next bit. So now I'm going to need to, in my vertical source table, have something that will match this. So I'm going to insert a column here. And here I'm going to say equals the weekday and speech marks, space, speech marks, and this one. But again, I'm going to format that as text, comma, D, D, M, 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 Y, Y. You don't actually need to do this because you are going to be looking up with the same one, but I do find that it helps when you're troubleshooting. Otherwise you just get uh, numbers which don't make any sense. So now we have this that can be used to look this up. Now, what is the next step? Well, the next step is we're going to uh, actually create the lookup. So if I copy, if I copy the formula here into this cell, and I'm going to copy these in here, and then these formulas are going to be used for the lookup. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up in this column and return the thing in this column. So in order to do that, let me just hide some things or rather group. I love grouping instead of hiding so that now we can see it's going to look up in these. And here I'm going to create the formula equals X lookup. Now, if you're still using VLOOKUPs, then highly recommend you change to X lookups. I have a video where I cover why XLOOKUP is better than VLOOKUP in pretty much every way. Uh, it is just an upgrade, and a VLOOKUP would not be able to do this. You'd have to move the previous columns around. So the XLOOKUP here, the lookup value is going to be uh, this one in the other table, comma, 
and then my lookup array is actually going to be this column. And then I'm going to press F4, usually leave a bunch of gaps at the end, F4 to lock that in. And then I will do this one is my return column. So you don't need to count or anything like that, like you do with VLOOKUPs. Uh, you just have to make sure that they end at exactly the same row, otherwise it won't work. And then if I close my brackets, I get a lot of NA errors, but we are going to fix those, so don't worry about it too much. But the point is we get the right one sometimes. Yeah. So how do you fix the NAs? That's when it can't find something, i.e. there is nothing on that date. But we know that's a very regular occurrence. You can't have shows every night. So you have this optional clause, if not found, in an XLOOKUP where you can press comma and then two speech marks. And then you can just drag that down and drag that across and you get it to be much nicer. Now we want to do this all in one because we don't want the combination table. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this formula, copy it, and then we're going to go in here and we're going to paste it. But the J4 is actually going to be replaced by all of this. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to cut and I'm going to replace that here and paste and then press enter. And I should have now all of this working well. There we go. Fantastic. So almost done. Now I can delete this. I don't need this anymore. Just a couple of things. So how did we get the filter for the lowest, the earliest date? Not too difficult. I'm just going to say choose start. And then here I'm going to just put in a, a date. So I'm going to say 30th of November 23. And then in this one, uh, I'm going to just add something where I'm going to say equals unique. I'm going to add in filter. Where I'm going to say from this array, choose and include comma. Keep an eye out on this, especially if you're new to these formulas. Uh, check whether this needs to end at 92 as well. Obviously, these could be going a lot further, but they just need to end at the same one. So that one needs to be greater than or equal to the start date, like this. Got my close brackets, there we go. And if I change this to 1st of Jan 24, now it will start at 1st Jan 24. If I press delete, it'll just show me everything. So yeah, so that is how you do the parameter search. Uh, the other thing we had was color coding. So if you select it all, uh, keep a lot of space at the end whenever you do any of these things. Now we're going to go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and text that contains really underused feature. So I'm going to say um, improv is going to be short uh, green. And I'm going to do it again. And text that contains, I'm going to say uh, pro is going to be in red. But it's text that contains, so I got it from improv as well. So pro he. And then I'm going to say, Text that contains uh, open mic is going to be in yellow. You keep going. And then the last one was text that contains, and if there was public hall, and that was showing us in a custom, which is a blue color. That's okay. And okay as well. And there you go. And this is pretty much how you do it. You do some extra formatting. Make sure you label your columns. So a weekday and start our week and a combined name and combined date. Then here we pretty much done. The only issue that this will have is duplicate dates. So if I select my dates and I go to another conditional formatting thing, highlight cell rules and duplicate values, I can get it to highlight the duplicates in red. And there are unfortunately sometimes where there's a public holiday and an open mic or an improv and a pro headliner, et cetera. So there is a way to do this. Um, we actually have to switch our XLOOKUP function for something a little bit more complicated. So there is a function called text join. So text join allows you to do a delimiter. So I'm going to say a comma 
Then say semicolon, otherwise it gets confusing when you do your colors. And then true, press tab to lock that in. And then all my text, so I can say all of these, for example. And then it can just list them out in a sentence. There we go. So they're all listed out like that. But that is step one. Let's say that I want this to happen, but only for events that are going to be in Dallas. So I can add it in an if statement. So in this one, I can say if open speech box, if this one needs to start name at the same. So 19 equals Dallas, like that in speech box, then return that. Otherwise, return speech box, speech box. And then we're going to close our brackets a second time for the if function as well as text join. And now it's just showing me the Dallas ones like that. So how are we going to do our formula? So I'm going to say here, text join, and my delimiter is going to be speech box, semicolon, space, speech box, comma, true, press tab to look at it. Almost always you'll have true. And now I'm going to do if all of this equals delete that because it's related to the purple column, then return this column, otherwise return speech box, speech box. And if I close my brackets two times, then we'll see that it should work. And we will test it. So here we've got pro headliner and improv on the same time, and it works just fine. So that is the one that you need to look at. And that's how you pretty much do it. So my name is David Lyman, and I hope you've enjoyed that. There are a lot of steps to it, but once you master it, it's not really that hard a process, I find. So if you liked that video, then check out my other videos and give this video a like. Thanks for watching.